even the smallest of towns, can make the news. We found that out the hard way. The smaller the town, the more tragic the story is, it seems. Perhaps that's the only way the town can be put on the map, so to speak. For our sake, I wish that wasn't the case. Not too much happens in this town, so the nightlife consists mainly of the occasional cow tipping or the spray-painted water tower reading Borat and Sasha. Sadly, <laughs> that was usually the headline as well. We had graduated from the only high school in town, eagerly awaiting the day we could leave. <sighs> that town never looked so good until now. They say hindsight is 2020, but I wouldn't know. All I see is darkness until the lights come on. Moonlit Friday night, the only time when the temperature is tolerable in the summer. My friends were that type to seem to attract trouble, no matter where they were. Usually didn't mean much, save for the occasional 3 a.m. call to our parents. My name is, well, was Jenna, and all I can ask is for you to listen. Another uneventful week had passed without one of us going to jail. I call that a good week. My friends called it a wasted one. They might consider that night a blessing, but I'll never know, even if I do see them each and every night. The poster with its bold lettering and foreign words drew them like moths to a flame. Come on, Jenna, Luke called. You're not seriously going to pay money to see people in bad movie makeup, are you? My voice cracked slightly. Oh, come on, Jen. There's nothing else to do. Stephanie smirked. I should have known she would have taken his side. Something told me to walk away. Run, even. And never look back. But the desire to fit in, and, admittedly, curiosity, pushed me closer to the poster. He didn't take a genius to figure out what it was. Circuit du Hypnoti. Traveling circus, world's best freak show. One night only. A show you will never forget. Without waiting for me to change my mind, they darted down the road and into the woods, following the path we knew so well. I never liked freak shows and always held a deep fear of the unknown. That night, the trail was lit with what looked like discarded Christmas lights. This added vision normally would have offered comfort, but no amount of light could brighten the off-key music droning through the trees. The big top came into view, the center peak looming over the tree line. Walking down the dirt path toward the entrance, the sound of rattling chains pulled my gaze from side to side. To the right, a cart adorned with iron bars was cast in ominous shadow. I watched the shadow shift followed by another dragging noise. To my left, an identical cart with even less light illuminating it. As we strode forth, something akin to a muffled scream went through the bars. My flighty nature had always made me on edge to begin with, but that sound chilled me to the bone. Had I been in a better state of mind, my surroundings would have given me much cause for alarm. The lights and tent alone would have saved me pain. So much pain. Another thing that should have struck me as odd was the lack of entrance fee. Surely a one-of-a-kind show would come with some sort of price. My friends seemed unfazed, and we entered without a ticket. The lack of a crowd would have shocked me had we lived in a larger town. However, the 50 people present was not an unusual number for any event. The decor was unlike any circus I'd ever seen. No bright colors, no balloons or children's laughter. Not a sound, save for that same song. The tent had taken on a charcoal hue, only broken up by the crimson panels. 
I would have been content sitting close to the top of the arena, but a combination of peer pressure and what I can only describe as compulsion pulled us closer to the ground. I know that look now. I see it in their eyes. It was the second row we chose as the music grew in intensity, but never in tone. None of us had spoken a word since we drew near the circus, and it seemed that same mute disposition would carry on through the show. Everything happened at once, so fast. We never stood a chance. The flat fell covering the entrance. Lights crackled and extinguished. Spotlights hummed to life, aiming towards the second opening. As the music shifted, so it seemed did the overall feeling. A low murmur broke out around the tent. What the hell did you get us into? I remember snapping once I found my voice. No one had time to answer, though. Into the arena he strode with a flourish of fog behind him. He alone would have been a show. Jet black suit and top hat. Cane adding style, but not function. That was my next sign, and I ignored it. I pray of you, do not ignore the signs. Atop his cane rode a silver skull, sporting ruby eyes. Innocent enough, I was a fool to think. Luke leaned in towards me with a knowing smirk. Nice Halloween costume, eh, Jenna? I remember nodding with a forced smile. With a booming voice, he held us captive. Welcome, Welcome one and all, all to my humble, humble show. show. An honor, honor it is indeed to perform, perform for you. For you see, without, without an audience, there, there is, is no show. show. His sickly sweet smile made my skin crawl, and yet there I sat. Spreading his arms wide, sparks shot from each corner, earning a wild applause from the small town crowd. Hold the applause, please. You are too kind. I promise a show to remember, and I never disappoint. Now, without further ado, I give you Sir Q de Hypnotique. With a swirl of his cane, he strode out of the arena. Once again, the lights dimmed, music changing to a sinister waltz-like tune. Spotlights shot to the top of the tent, revealing a trapeze. The acrobats performed flips and catches with ease, escaping death by mere inches. With a final synchronized flip, they climbed down the ladder and pranced victoriously once around the pit as the crowd roared. They didn't appear the slightest bit winded. They passed in front of us, and I will never forget their eyes. Those eyes that haunt my dreams. The eyes of a raven sitting oddly in human faces. Spotlight shifting again to a woman, curling and twisting into positions no human body was made for. I watched in silent horror as her eyes widened and contracted in what looked like agony. Yet never once did she stop. A necklace wrapped around her neck glowed in the direct light. Her mouth never moved, even when it seemed that her spine would snap. At the beat from an odd jewel around her neck, a new feat, a new grimace. This is too much. I can't watch this. I stood to leave, feeling ill after what I'd just seen. Once again, the arena went dark, and I was forced to sit. Again, the ringmaster entered with a gleam in his eyes. Not, Not tired, tired yet, yet, I hope. Good. Good. For the, For best, the best is yet, yet to come. come. He turned towards the entrance and held out a hand. Two black horses with wild eyes pulled the two carts that I saw from outside into the arena. My dear friends, I give you my pride and joy. My children, if you will. To my right, a beauty beyond compare. Creature of unknown origin. She would have been lost if not for me. Look upon her with admiration. The door on the cart swung open, and the same stifled scream emerged. With a frown, he entered the cart, 
and drug her into the arena. The shock and disgust I felt was echoed in the gasps of the other patrons. The girl was all but dragged around the dirt ring. It was only when she got closer did I fully understand. Her brown eyes were bloodshot and wide, with what appeared to be terror and pain. The horn protruding from her forehead forced her to look down. How fake is that? Luke mocked. I was starting to believe otherwise, and if the black stain around the horn and trailing on her face was real, I was right. Her terrified eyes met mine, and though she did not speak a word, her lips formed, Run! Another warning I shouldn't have ignored. With another violent yank on the rope tied around her neck, she was shoved back into the cart. Briefly breaking character, the ringmaster wiped something red off his hands onto his black pants. His voice took on a sinister tone, all formality gone. A beauty, is she not? A whisper ran through the crowd. We all knew something was off. The first cart was hauled away as he moved to the second. Not impressed? Very well. I had better. Flinging the door open, he entered the cart. Frantic rattling of chains and scuffling sounds emerged. He emerged, hauling the abomination behind him. His face is one that I will never forget. Eyes that were never meant to adorn a human face looked sightlessly upon the crowd. Eyes of an eagle. Not a sound was made as he paraded around the ring. In horror, I realized why. Etched in the wood of the cart stood his name. The bird. He no longer possessed the ability to speak, his jaw non-existent. Instead, a fabricated beak adorned his face, attached with a bolt and screw. In a desperate attempt to gain distance from his twisted master, he clawed the chain with his talons, steel curves replacing the natural nails. Just as before, he too was returned to the cart and taken away. The revulsion I felt that day was indescribable, and a feeling I wish upon no one. With another flourish, flames spouted from the corners and the crowd seemed to forget their earlier terror. Applause roared through the tent as he announced the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed our little show. But as I said before, there would be no show without you. The lights fell and all went black. I staggered, trying to find the railing. I could hear Luke and Stephanie laughing close by. Luke? Where are you? I felt the cool night air on my right cheek. I turned, groping blindly for something, anything to lead me out. Luke laughed. See you later, Jenna. Those are the last words I heard from my friends. I was beyond saving, even if they had wanted to. I recall cages one on either side of me as I stumbled out the wrong door. No carts to keep the creatures hidden. The young girl huddled in a corner of her cell, blonde hair falling in front of her eyes. The pristine white horn stained with blood. She brushed the hair away, staring at me with wild eyes, muttering the same word over and over. Angel! What? I begged her to repeat it once more. The only sound she would make was the humming of that accursed melody. Turning to run, I came face to face with the bird, his eyes wide, almost begging me to leave. The only sound he could produce was to clack his makeshift beak together, 
Dark black stains scattered the floor and the walls, while the artificial lights popped and snapped. And still, she hummed that song. Clutching the chain link fence, I begged him, How do I get out? Please, help me! He dropped his head, crouching, and drug a claw through the dirt, scrawling out one word. Angel. No, that couldn't be all. A door slammed, and the human unicorn giggled, the most unnerving sound. He rounded the corner, holding a syringe. Without you, there is no show. That twisted smile returned. Backing up, I felt a piercing pain in my arms. I was in the clutches of his male creation. Why, thank you, David, the psychopath crooned. Right before the prick in the side of my neck, I could have sworn I heard an inaudible, I'm sorry. And here I sit, having watched the procedures done on Sophia and David. He records each evolution, transforming them into the human unicorn and the bird. It was always me. I was always the target. And as I stare through these iron bars, I see them, though there's nothing I can do. Front row and center they stare at me, enjoying a job well done. Yet, I pity the poor soul seated to their right, the new target. I fear my time has come, but I beg of you to keep aware. Nothing is ever as it seems. Look at the lights. I plead with you to look. Each hue of every patron stares as you pass by. Then look at the tent. Look closer, please. Not a scrap of skin wasted. The tent grows after each show. The only people that remain constant are his scouts, sent to ensnare us. The show must go on, and on it shall. He announces me as we speak. I must go. Should you hear the music, run. Run, and do not look back. My name was Jenna, and I ask for you to listen. An empty cart sits next to mine, and he searches to make his shows last. And last, it shall, as long as he has you. The, the fallen, fallen angel. angel! He booms, pulling me from the cart. A twist of the cane, and my wings jerk to life, attached to my spine forever. Welcome to a show you'll never forget. Run for your life!